The next speaker is going to be Brian Heislop, who's uh, an associate professor in radiology at UNC, is going to give an update on uh, MR uh, applications. I'm going to be speaking today on applications of MRI in oncology. And after a uh, brief comparison between CT and MR, I'm going to give several examples of applications of MRI for anatomic imaging, which we are accustomed to, uh, but also uh, molecular imaging using both endogenous and exogenous contrast agents and MR spectroscopy. Um, by way of historical perspective, I just want to remind people that uh, much of uh, magnetic resonance, uh, uh, pulsed, uh, Im or pulsed uh, spectroscopy, diffusional measurements with magnetic resonance, these were all uh, uh, developed decades before MRI itself was invented. Uh, the latter occurred in the early 70s. With CT, the image contrast is based on X-ray absorption. We commonly give intravenous contrast and rely on contrast kinetics. Uh, because we are dealing with ionizing radiation, uh, we, may, we are limited when dealing with uh, people uh, as to how many times we can scan to map out contrast dynamics. With MRI, we do not have those limitations, and we, we have a lot of uh, different levers we can use to develop image contrast. Uh, there's intrinsic uh, parameters based on relaxation times. There's resonance frequencies, which forms the basis for image-guided uh, or MR spectroscopy and imaging combined. And again, there is uh, contrast mechanisms based on uh, diffusion or perfusion, as well as contrast agents that we administer as physicians. One big advantage of CT is the time it takes to uh, acquire an image, <clears throat> which is in seconds as opposed to MR, which uh, more commonly is, is uh, several minutes uh, for a complete study. Uh, ionizing radiation, of course, present in CT. Absolute quantification. <laughs> It's more readily obtained with CT because the Hounsfield unit is normalized to that of, of water, whereas uh, with MRI image intensities, uh, they're typically more subjective. You can have ratios of pre- and post-contrast uh, imaging for relative enhancement, <clears throat> but there isn't an absolute scale in the same way there is with CT. Flow quantification can be done with MR without contrast. Tissue characterization is superior with MR. Uh, allergic uh, reactions are, are minor incidents in both imaging modalities, but a little greater with iodinated contrast and CT. For patients uh, with underlying renal dysfunction, uh, C, uh, CT iodinated contrast may be nephrotoxic. Uh, with MRI, uh, uh, with many of the gadolinium-based contrast agents, there can be an increased risk of NSF. Uh, there have been essentially no reported cases of NSF since about 2008 with the advent of more stringent guidelines for uh, gadolinium-based contrast administration. I'm going to show a <clears throat> few cases for breast MRI, uh, courtesy of Dr. Sherry Kuzmiak, uh, who's the director of the breast imaging program here. This first case is uh, oblique and CC views demonstrating uh, uh, dense breast parenchyma, very difficult to detect an underlying uh, tumor, <clears throat> and here I'm showing a subtracted image. By that I mean we take a post-contrast image, subtract pre-contrast data, and all of that uh, uh, breast parenchyma uh, that was obscuring visualization, uh, but it does not enhance sufficiently, so we can focus on that speculated uh, mass that uh, we're seeing. <clears throat> and one of the newer uh, things in MRI is quantitative evaluation of uh, contrast enhancement using these color maps and the dynamic curve as a function of time that we're seeing in the upper right corner, demonstrating rapid uptake of contrast and slow washout, which is uh, characteristic uh, for breast cancer. Uh, there are a series of cases that I could go through. I'm going to skip a few of them in the interest of time. <coughs> Focus on this case, uh, which shows uh, two masses, one in the right breast with axillary adenopathy uh, in the right axilla, and there's a smaller lesion in the left breast. 
<clears throat> and those are the contrast dynamics curves below. Thank you. And those, uh, this in the lower left corresponds to uh, the tumor in the right breast. We can see the rapid uptake of contrast and slow washout. The fibroadenoma in the left breast had slower uptake of contrast and uh, continued enhancement with uh, delayed imaging. Uh, subsequent response to neoadjuvant therapy was remarkable, as one can see by the image in the upper right. We commonly think of ultrasound and CT for uh, interventional procedures, but MR can be used for interventional procedures, and is commonly used in breast imaging for interventional procedures. This is the coiled patient is in a, in a prone position, and biopsies may be done from a lateral approach. This is an example of a, uh, a core biopsy device to provide MR guidance is placed along the lateral aspect of the breast. And this is a single image showing the tract uh, from a needle uh, where one can check the position of the uh, uh, biopsy uh, relative to the mass following administration of contrast. We're going to move on to MR spectroscopy. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, uh, in imaging, we focus on proton spectroscopy, although other techniques such as uh, phosphorus spectroscopy exist. Uh, MR spectroscopy has a limited availability as compared to imaging in general, but there are applications in neuro, breast, and prostate. And I'll be showing examples from prostate MR. <clears throat> prostate MR, we can focus on uh, T2-weighted or fluid-sensitive imaging for anatomic imaging. We can use MR spectroscopy, and we're going to look at the spectroscopic signature of prostate cancer. And also, there will be a couple images taking a look at contrast dynamics and the contribution of diffusion. These two images, that image on the left uh, was obtained using a spine array coil. The second image uh, shows an endorectal coil placed into the rectum so that the coils are in closer uh, proximity to the prostate gland that allow for improved uh, image resolution. However, both uh, techniques can be used for prostate MR and MR spectroscopy. This is two axial images of the prostate, high resolution uh, images, and these lines overlying the two images of the prostate gland correspond to spectra that are obtained on a voxel by voxel basis. So we're obtaining proton MR spectroscopy as a function of position within the prostate gland. So how does this help us? Here we'll look at this patient uh, with a uh, suspicious region, this hypointense uh, in the uh, lower uh, right posterior aspect in the peripheral zone. There's an arrow in the image in the upper right corner. And then we're looking at two sets of spectra. Uh, one overlying that region suspicious for cancer, and then uh, the other in a, in a normal zone in the left side. And as we see here, we're looking at two spectral peaks. That on the left is choline, and that on the right is uh, citrate peak. And in a normal prostate gland, the citrate peak is relatively high compared to the choline, but in the presence of uh, uh, cancer or, or tumor, those ratios change, and the choline peaks become relatively large relative to that of citrate. So we're seeing the difference in spectroscopic signature there in comparing the abnormal uh, cancer uh, spectroscopy on the lower left as compared to the more normal spectroscopic signature of prostate on the lower right. Exogenous contrast agents, we are accustomed to gad using gadolinium-based agents in clinical imaging. Another class of agents is SPIO, or superparamagnetic iron oxide particles, essentially rust. But uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you take rust and you can reproducibly make it in tens of nanometers to hundreds of nanometers, it can be useful. It can preferentially deposit in the liver or spleen or in lymph nodes. <clears throat> this is an example uh, of its clinical application in a patient uh, with uh, prostate uh, uh, so we have a 3D volume rendered image of the vasculature, prostate gland, and we're going to focus our attention on these two small normal sized nodes. One is red and one is green, and these are going to correspond to a benign and uh, uh, cancer laden uh, node. So here we're looking at a pre contrast image here, a, uh, 
uh, both are comparable in size and both appear similar pre-contrast. Following the administration of uh, an SPIO particles, the uh, contrast is taken up. These iron oxide or rust particles are taken up uh, by a normal lymph node, and so they appear dark on post-contrast imaging, whereas nodes that contain uh, tumor do not take up the iron oxide particle and, as a consequence, uh, remain hyperintense. So this is a clinical example of uh, uh, the use of SPIO particles. However, experimentally, they're very useful because uh, many, many things, many entities, antibodies can be uh, uh, labeled. So these particles can be labeled with uh, CCK, secretin. There have been reports using VEGF. Uh, alternatively, they can be injected into cells, and using MR microscopy, the migration of those cells can be tracked over time. <clears throat> I also wanted to touch briefly on uh, diffusion-weighted imaging. Uh, diffusion, uh, the MR experiment, uh, as shown before the invention of MRI, MR could be used to measure diffusion, and that can be applied to aid in either lesion identification or the assessment of treatment response following uh, chemotherapy. So this, again, is an example of a, uh, a spatial image of a prostate with a small mass, somewhat difficult to see because of a regional artifact, but there's a mass here. This is a, called an ADC map, essentially a measure of the diffusion coefficients. There's a region of restricted diffusion here corresponding to this lesion. This is a uh, assessment of uh, quantitative contrast dynamics where one takes into account information such as the, the speed of wash in, the rate of wash out of contrast to identify lesions uh, that are suspicious for tumor. This is the same patient, same color-coded map, diffusion-weighted imaging, and here we're seeing the contrast dynamics, the rapid wash in and wash out characteristic of prostate cancer. One can identify uh, regions or ROIs in this area and see where they lie uh, in this uh, joint histogram that looks at uh, contrast uptake and extracellular uh, volume associated with the lesion. Um, for, uh, of course, all imaging essentially is computer-aided since the early 70s, <clears throat> but what I meant by this was computer-aided diagnosis, uh, segmentation algorithms that can be applied, as well as image-guided uh, therapy that can be used to guide surgical ablation uh, treatment as well as assess uh, response to treatment based on those contrast dynamics curves that I showed on earlier slides. This is a very rough uh, uh, segmentation of the hepatic vasculature uh, showing the portal vascular system and hepatic venous system uh, that can be extracted from images. Uh, image fusion uh, obviously is commonly done and will be touched on more in the next talk. Um, liver imaging. There are many applications. Uh, one is for screening in the cirrhotic patient, characterization of liver lesions, as well as uh, response to ablation or chemotherapy. I'm going to show just two final uh, cases here. One was an elderly woman with hematuria and a bladder mass, and incidentally noted was this mass in the right lobe of the liver uh, with uh, intrinsic edema on pre-contrast images, hypervascular uh, with washout on delayed post-contrast imaging as well as the uh, primary mass in the right kidney. We see this heterogeneously enhancing mass in the right kidney compared to a more normal appearing left kidney. And she turned out to have both a transitional cell carcinoma as well as a well-differentiated HCC. But in contrast, uh, in the second patient, there was a liver mass seen on ultrasound in a young woman. And the, uh, there were two lesions seen, uh, one of which is pedunculated they were hyperintense on fluid sensitive imaging. And I'll make one point uh, here, which is that it used to be that in comparing CT and MR, one would extol the virtues of multiplanar imaging in MR. Uh, and because one was confined to axial images on, CD, on CT. That's not really the case anymore. The image resolution uh, and the slice thickness is small enough on CT that one can make use of multiplanar reconstructions. Secondly, the, uh, the pre contrast imaging appearance. Uh, coupled with the characteristic enhancement pattern, uh, show this to be a pedunculated uh, hemangioma uh, rather than malignant tumor. I, I wanted to show at least one benign lesion in the oncology meeting. And so th this was my opportunity. So to summarize, I wanted to uh, 
uh, I've shown many aspects of uh, structural imaging, uh, the use of uh, MR in biopsy, but if in the future of MR, areas of active research in, include uh, diffusion-weighted imaging and or quantitative contrast dynamics and uh, their role in uh, characterizing particularly early response to treatment before the size of tumors actually changes, as well as targeted contrast uh, agents. Thank you. Thank you.